Now, Julian Assange was too unwell yesterday to attend his last-ditch high court bid against extradition to the US. He's facing espionage charges over the WikiLeak revelations all those years ago. The case enters its second day today. Uh, joining us right now to discuss uh, that uh, uh, case is the director of The Trust Fall, a documentary about the WikiLeaks uh, founder's case. Uh, it's Kim Staten, who is in the studio with me right now. Good um, afternoon to you. Thanks for Good joining us. Julia. Um, and I said as well, I said I, I had assumed you know, this, this documentary, The Trust Fall, it's out on the 15th of March um, uh, in cinemas, although it's already premiered last Sunday. Um, that you would have spent time with um, with uh, 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 Julian Assange, but of course he was in the Ecuadorian embassy for all those years, and then of course he's been in Belmarsh prison ever since, face fighting these extradition charges to the United States. So you've actually had to make do with archive footage, but also talking to his family, his, his wife Stella, uh, to uh, to those who've been supporting him, John Pilger and otherwise. Um, just tell us first of all. Um, why you decided to make a documentary about Julian Assange? Do you are you supportive of his case, or are you just interested in the topic? What was what was the reason behind that? Yeah, well, I'm I'm very supportive of his case, and uh, usually when you make a documentary, you come from a neutral perspective, and so you hear sort of equally both sides of the argument, and uh, maybe devote both uh, equal amounts of time to each side. Um, but as I got into interviewing people and exploring this issue and researching, I very quickly realised that this is a case of oppression uh, and it wasn't appropriate for me to give equal side to people are, that are doing an incredible injustice and uh, breaching his human rights with the way that they're treating him. OK, um, now, this case, this is his last-ditch bid in the British courts. He's uh, uh, in the High Court appealing... Well, his lawyers are appealing... Uh, uh, against the latest judgment for him to be facing extradition to the United States. This is where he faces an um, extraordinary number of charges, uh, 17 counts of espionage, one charge of computer misuse. If convicted of all those, he could receive a prison term, these laughable US prison terms of up to 175 years. American authorities have said it would be much lower. They basically say, though, that he was involved in the hacking into their... Uh, military computers. This, of course, was carried out by Bradley, now Chelsea Manning, who has already served time, obviously, for breaching, you know, law, the requirements of his of his uh, employment contract. I've never really understood why a foreign national, an Australian national in Julian Assange, on foreign soil, was committing a crime in the US, breaching their secrets. He has, you know, if I were doing it to Britain, I perhaps could be a traitor to Britain. Um, I've not signed the official secret. I've not signed up to be an employer employee where I have I have information which I'm only able to see on condition I don't share it elsewhere, as as uh, Chelsea Manning was. Um, I find it extraordinary that these charges are being taken seriously by the British authorities at all. Yeah, look, it is absolutely absurd because what we have here is a Australian citizen who was working in London at the time, being charged under an antiquated 1917 Espionage Act, which is meant to criminalise spying, and he's, he's not actually spying in the first place. What he's doing is uh, acting as a journalist and publisher, publishing the information provided by a whistleblower, which is not for the purpose of spying. It's not for state secrets or the, the codes of, uh, you know, important um, secret agents or anything like that. It's war crimes. These, the, the, but there, the now, there crimes were war crimes exposed. that he exposed. And again, he's the publisher, he's a journalist, and I, and I accept all of that. And there were lots of things which we had a right to know and we should have known. There have been various exposés, you know, including other exposés, not, not by him, but, you know, but of, about the fact that the American government was spying on its own citizens against its own constitution. However, he also was working with Guardian and other newspapers in America. And lots of people who worked with him were very unhappy about the fact that he was willing to put out information that wasn't redacted that put an awful lot of people, innocent civilians and people who were working, you know, as spies uh, on behalf of their countries, at risk, put their lives at risk. And he was far too willing to say, no, I'm just going to put this stuff out without, without actually uh, any protection for those well, that's actually He was irresponsible. No, that's actually a myth that is perpetuated continually that he didn't redact. That is not true he at all. He did redact some, but he didn't redact everything that could have actually put people at risk. Well, if you're talking about the Afghan war logs, Actually, it was um, some Guardian journalists who put out a book where they published uh, an access code in the book recklessly um, in that book. He, Julian Assange did not... Uh, did, did redact. He, he went to great pains to... Um, he, he stayed up all night and all day redacting all the names personally, and he was the only one at the time who did that, whereas the Guardian staff 
um, couldn't be bothered. And so he took the responsibility. So it's well, I mean, he should have taken... I mean, there, it is... When you when you have that sort of access to that information, you do need to have that uh, responsibility. Absolutely, and, and um, he Benedict did. Spence, somebody ask you about this. I mean, do you support this hearing? Do you think that the British government should be, you know... And ultimately, it will come down to the government to make this final decision. I think it's... It, none of this sits particularly well with me, partly because I do think that the the things that he's being charged with do not actually fit the crime. I think it's very sort of convenient... Do you think he committed a crime at all? <sighs> I mean, I, I mean, do... Bradley Manning did, Chelsea Manning did. Yes, you know. well, that's the thing. And then it's down to a question of, well, actually, is it the responsibility, you know, what documents are sort of covered by official secrets legislation? Do you then have some responsibility not to? But if it is, you know, revealing things like war crimes, then actually, yes, this is very important. We're, we've been talking all, all morning and afternoon about Israel and war crimes. Well, ultimately, if we're going to hold people to a very high standard, that should absolutely include the US government. It should include the British government as well. I think part of the issue with Julian Assange is he doesn't cut a very sympathetic figure because of just how he is. Uh, and so I think the story has been slightly pushed to the side. He doesn't garner a lot of sympathy. There were the allegations uh, um, of sexual assault as well that took place in Sweden, I believe. And so broadly speaking, I think it's one of those things where you look at the person and you think, I don't particularly like this person. He's, I don't think he's a very likeable person. And that, person, and that potentially no. clouds whether or not this is something that should be acceptable. But it's also, mm. let's be clear, it's a case of the US government leaning on the British government. And this British government, we like to portray ourselves as being independent and yep. free thinking and fair, but actually it's a question of them saying, now you're going to give him to us, chaps, and you're not going to make too much of a fuss about it. And yeah. that does appear to be what's happening. Um, he shouldn't be being held in Belmarsh, of all places, whilst this is whilst this is happening. I do understand the whole thing. He did breach bail conditions he before, did, and but, he did uh, abscond to the, the place Ecuadorian where we send, embassy for seven but, but years. But the place where we send our very worst terrorists? Yeah. Oh, come on, that's overkill. No, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, certainly there is that issue, isn't there? And, the, and the, 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 uh, the basically what he could face when he goes to America... It's not going to be a slap on the wrist. There was a big concern for a long time. It would be in solitary confinement. He could face dying behind bars. The American authorities said, no, 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 that wouldn't happen. Um, but, of course, you know, what reassurances would they have? Lots of this case is revolving around the claims that Julian Assange, he suffered from depression, that uh, mental health problems, and that actually that he would kill himself. Uh, if he were actually sent to America. Is that what his wife and his friends and those supporters have told you? What, what are their concerns? Well, uh, it was a revealed in a prison search um, a couple of years ago, uh, early on in the extradition trial, that he had hidden a razor blade in his cell. Uh, and that's because... Uh, which was revealed by Nils Mel's a special rapporteur on torture, who visited him in the prison, uh, that... Uh, he was, uh, if, if, if he was to be extradited, that he would take his life. And uh, understandably, that's why the, initially the extradition couldn't, case couldn't was Couldn't anyone was threaten won. to do that? And we've had other cases, haven't we, like teenage hackers into the uh, defence uh, you know, department's uh, uh, computers have, have made the same claim. So I do wonder about that. But look, your documentary, though, is out in cinemas, 15th of March, the trust fall uh, following this case. We shall see what the result of this case is, no doubt, very soon. Uh, appreciate you joining us, Kim Stoughton. Thank you for that.